Brutally Speaking podcast is proudly sponsored by Rockabilia.com. For over 30 years, Rockabilia has been the go-to destination for all things band merch. With over 500,000 items in their online store and collaborations with today's hottest bands, you're sure to find something you love. Use our code BREW10 at checkout and take 10% off your total order. So go pick up your favorite new piece of merch now over at rockabilia.com. Now, on to the show. People say you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not having fun doing it, What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast. I am your host, John, and this episode's guest is Ryan Knight, guitarist of the Black Dahlia Murder. They just dropped their latest album, Servitude, uh, which is out now via Metal Blade Records. Um, Full transparency, and especially if you watch some of the Instagram live things I do just to kind of kill some time while I'm waiting for files to render and so forth, uh, you probably saw me try to record this intro and outro uh, already, and... Every time I do it, I just feel like I kind of get lost in, in something that I don't feel like I'm articulating very well. So here we go for hopefully the last time of doing this. But, you know, I think it can't be understated enough uh, how much the Black Dahlia murder means uh, to me as a fan of metal, but more importantly to me as a Michigander who is into metal. Um I think for a long time, the Black Dahlia murder sort of, and, and I'll kind of put the emphasis more on Trevor, um, but I think that there's a lot of people who, when we think of the Black Dahlia murder, we think of Trevor, we think of what he has done for not only the the scene, the metal scene here in Michigan, but really abroad, all over the world, you know, constantly wearing shirts of bands that probably have less than a thousand Spotify listeners and things like that. You know, he was such a champion for the scene that he was a part of and came from. And when he passed, I, I, I know it was largely felt all across the world, all across the board. Um, obviously all the news sites that would post about, you know, his passing and so forth. Um, I think it is one of those things where, it did show how much he and the Black Dahlia murder meant to all of us. But I think there's just an extra layer of it to be from here in Michigan, or I've, I guess for me to live here in Michigan, because I'm not from here, but it felt like such a huge loss. And to have the question mark over the band, that was kind of the consistency. Like you could always plan on, well, I know every few years I'm going to get a Black Dahlia album. It's going to rip. I'm going to see them maybe two or three times on the tour in support of that. And when that's kind of taken away and, and a champion of that scene and the underground scene specifically is gone, it really kind of makes you wonder, well, now what, what happens to the scene when we don't have its biggest supporter out there advocating for all of us and for all of those that maybe will never become like as big as the black Dahlia murder. And so I remember just the, the, like I said, the uncertainty of it all really weighed heavy upon us all here, I think. Uh, I know I talked to a handful of friends uh, that, you know, I had, had seen Black Dahlia murder with a few times, and I, there was just a lot of sadness. Um, you know, I've told the story a few times at this point now of doing these intros a few times, but, you know, I remember the night Trevor passed away. Like, there's not a, a ton of ban people necessarily that I can remember. Oh, I was here specifically when, when I got the news. Um, and interestingly enough, two of the biggest ones in the last handful of years is when I was working at the bar I used to work at. Um, one was Taylor Hawkins and I had to kick people out of the bathroom cause they were blocking the doorway in. Um, famously I told that story over on, on the bar podcast, but, uh, I think with Trevor, I just remember playing all four of the Black Dahlia songs that they had on our internet touch tunes uh, at the time and people being real bummed. Granted, it was the end of the night. It was time for everyone to go anyway, so I didn't really give a fuck, but it was just amusing to kind of see it. But, you know, to, to know that that could be it, 
that could be it for one of the more influential bands of our state, of the scene. And I remember the talks when it was kind of announced, like, hey, the band might be continuing. There was a lot of, well, what is it going to look like? How is it going to sound? What's going to happen? And to see that first, you know, the comeback show with the, the new lineup of the band, and then now that we're here with a new album and the band's touring and all these kind of things, it's one of those where it kind of serves as a reminder that grief and healing and getting through loss looks different for everybody and everyone's entitled to how we go through it. But I think for, for a lot of us, and again, I'll speak for me and I'll speak on behalf of being here in Michigan, that the Black Dahlia continuing on, I think, means so much to so many people. And it's a great story of being able to persevere in the loss of a close friend of a brother and to know that what you're doing is honoring that legacy moving forward while continuing your own. And I always think that's kind of the hard part when bands, you know, lose an integral member of the band. Like how do we progress forward where it honors what that person's doing? But I think a lot of times we don't think of the other lives that are impacted. You know, there's in any band anywhere from two to three to four to five other people that their lives just were, you know, impacted. Their their touring career is done potentially. And it's just kind of it's really crazy to kind of look at it sometimes when you think about it and kind of see the parallels between, and again, this is more me having dealt with a lot of deaths of friends and family and so forth, kind of in a very quick and unexpected manner, but you, you just kind of, kind of got to figure out how to pick up the pieces and move forward. And that looks different for everybody. Um, but I'm, I'm honestly glad to be sitting here today, being able to bring you a conversation with Ryan and that the crux of it is there's a new black Dahlia murder record. So, Without further ado, this is my conversation with Ryan, and I'll talk to you on the other side of it. So it was kind of funny because like leading up to this conversation happening, like when I was booking it, I wasn't entirely sure initially who I was going to be chatting with from the band. And so it was kind of interesting because like I live here in Michigan in Grand Rapids and the band as a whole, I think to me kind of represents something I think a lot more than I think it does to a lot of other people just because I live in this state I have for a very long time initially, you know, grew up out in Delaware, moved here in like the mid nineties. And so it's a thing to me where it's crazy because I feel like the band has kind of always been ours. And as a Michigan band, like I look at it as a Michigan band through and through like you're ours. And it's a thing where when people are like, Oh yeah, I'm seeing them in this. And I'm like, Oh, I forget sometimes that certain bands are not just ours. Like I have the same problem with like La dispute. And to me, they're still just a local GR band, even though it's like, Oh yeah, no, Th hundreds of thousands of people know this band and, and like go ape shit for them. They're not right. just ours. And it's kind of interesting to think about that. But I wonder from your perspective, and I know you're not, you know, a Michigan native. Uh, I believe you're from Georgia, born and raised, correct? Mm -hmm. Born and okay. raised. So, okay. So, do you feel that? Do you, do you feel that when you joined the band? Uh, I think what back in 09, like, did you feel that kind of sense of like what it meant uh, to be? in the black Dolly murder when you come to Michigan, like, do you get a sense of that, like kind of heaviness and weight or is it not really something you feel? No, it is like, I mean, I definitely feel like, um, a hometown this, especially like any, anytime we play anywhere in Michigan, I mean, especially Detroit Metro. Uh, right. I just, I just moved to Detroit Metro like a year ago. So oh, okay. even, I'm a Michigander now, but, um, but yeah, I definitely feel, and I always have ever since I joined the band. Yeah. I mean, um, I feel like a responsibility, you know, mm. uh, to bring glory to the state, you know, and when we definitely feel that when, you know, when we play, like I said, anywhere in the state. Yeah. Um, 
we're still we're still repping Detroit, even though none of us technically live in Detroit. But um, but yeah, very very much a uh, very much a Michigan band for sure. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting because I, I feel like you know, obviously, without kind of you know starting us off with being sort of on a down note, but it's like when there was the potential that the band was going to be gone and, and not when the uncertainty of not knowing what was going to happen in, in the camp of black Dahlia murder, it felt like a huge loss uh, across, like honestly across the state. Like, and I'm sure it feels that way for all of you for a multitude of different reasons. Like, you know, is this done? What are we doing? Are we going to be able to move forward? But I just remember there being like, kind of like you're the last ones really putting your stamp on the scene and the genre for such a long time and also being so heralded for what you were doing that it just felt like we lost one of our last beacons of like light in this this genre this music and it was so interesting to see and think about it because it's like for as long as kind of i've been going to shows getting into more extreme versions and subgenres of metal it's like black dolly kind of had their hands in a little bit of all of it so it's like that was always kind of the source of well, I guess let's see what Black Dolly's doing now on this record. And let's kind of like, oh, I like that. And, you know, Trevor's kind of championing this band that I've never heard of. So maybe I'll go check that out. Or like you guys are on tour with, you know, a legendary band, but also you're bringing out, you know, good up and coming bands too. So just kind of the the impact that you all had, I think, um, was one that just, I'm glad that the band's, still around i'm glad that you guys are choosing to continue forward and i'm glad that there's going to be a new record in less than a month as of when we're recording this because it feels like how it should be to me that's what i've always known kind of and so again i i, I didn't know where we were going to go with this but it's one of those things like i just know what the band represents and means to me and being here in, in michigan and to me i feel like it's it's a thing where i just constantly wonder like and I love kind of talking to people about like the growth of a person um, and how do you navigate hardships and so forth. So to me, like just the idea of like, do you feel that weight as an outsider? Do, is it something you notice? Is it something you feel? Is it something that is maybe the chip on your shoulder where you're like, oh, you know what? We got to fucking bring it. Like is, if it's yeah. something that you all are, and it seems like you guys are. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, we, I got the, I've had the question, uh, here recently um if we feel um that we have something to prove and mm. uh i think i feel like there's like two sides of that coin i feel like i feel like the band in general even you know this will be my fifth record but like the 10 records i mean i feel like the band's already proven a lot but so like I, I almost want to I almost want to answer that question as like no, you know, mm. but like at the same time for this record, I feel like we do have to like prove ourselves, like maybe more so than ever. Obviously, because you know, as Trevor's not here, and, he, and yeah, he was such like a, a pillar of the not even you know of course the michigan metal community hardcore scene part, it, it, i feel like he kind of just amasses everything but like but you know really yeah. like the metal community as a whole so and and we're you know missing this just like sort of yeah just uh almost iconic figure i feel like um and um so yeah i feel like we you know on this record we knew that i mean we put all, our all obviously into every record we do but on this one yeah we really i mean we put a lot of hours into it especially brandon he was there like every single um stage of the record you know um so yeah we felt like we really definitely really had to deliver on this one um for people that haven't heard the record yet or at least the whole record um i think everyone's going to be really surprised and really like what what brian brought because i really think he he killed it you know um I really think he's got like his own thing going it, at times he almost reminds me of trevor you know but he also has mm -hmm. like his own thing going but anyway to circle back around yeah i feel like we yeah we definitely felt like we had to like just really deliver on this one you know song wise performance wise just everything and i, and I think everyone's gonna gonna 
definitely hear that when they finally hear the entire record. I think the interesting thing that this record may be afforded all of you, and I don't know if it's something that you're aware of when you're in it, because I think it's kind of hard sometimes when you're focused on a project of sorts uh, that you're so like everyone's locked in on making this the best that it can be. But this is also, and you've had a few of them between touring and playing shows and so forth, but it's not often that you can be, you know, a, a band that's 10 albums in or for you, you know, the fifth album in, and you've been doing this collectively for so long, but now you're experiencing a ton of firsts. And I always think that that's interesting. The later in life you get where instead of kind of, being able to be, I know this, this is easy. I know how to navigate this. This is just, you know, it's the same thing every like groundhog day, essentially. And then right. now you're kind of thrown for a lot of firsts and how do you navigate those? So were there any things in the writing or recording process of this record? Maybe that were aside, obviously from vocal differences and so forth, but was there anything that it felt like where you, you are aware that these are firsts that are happening for you and kind of how you react to them? Yeah. You know, like some of it, I feel like, I feel like making a record with this band, uh, you know, of course, Brian has his own, he had his own mountain to climb, I guess, in a way, you know, with, obviously, yeah, with the vocals and then he had to like, you know, he wrote all the lyrics and so forth. But um, this is also like the first record where we have like two lead guitar players, which is, of course, definitely the first time, you know, for, for this band. Um, so we kind of have to like, you have to kind of think like, since we have that thing going on now where you have two lead players, you have to, I feel like you have to like approach the songs just with that in mind, you know, because you want to make use of it. You know, if I think of all the great bands that maybe exemplify that, like uh, Judas Priest, you know, Iron Maiden, um, Ben Lizzy, you know, there we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But like, you know, I feel like um, we've definitely utilized that on this album. Obviously, you know, even though we're both lead guitar players, like we're not trying to make some like shred record. That's not the point here. So we were, I think we both knew, there's there's definitely things we don't want to do with it. You know, we right. gotta do it like, tastefully. And there, and it is, you'll hear some of that on the record, but I think like, as far as the whole like twin guitar thing, I think that's gonna take like another record or two for us to fully uh realize the whole thing you know some of the songs could maybe be a little grander you know there's just various things you can do really other than that it's pretty much like making a record as usual because you know we got you know i've made well this is my fifth one with brian but you know with uh with max and alan this is my what third third one Third one. Yeah, so I don't know. It's like, yeah, there are new things, but at the same time, I feel like for a lot of us, it's like we're just so used to working together that, you know, it happens like pretty naturally, I feel like. It's kind of interesting, like, you know, and this is going to be such a weird analogy, but it's kind of like one of the few that I like, I think of where doing the same thing, I'm like, I don't, I don't know if. Like, I get something different out of it, but, like, so Atlanta is kind of, like, a, a spot that, like, in the last, I'll say, probably six or seven years, like, my wife and I go to a couple of times a year, and it's kind of, like, on our very short list. Like, if we ever move away, like, that's where we're going. And when people ask me, like, what is it about it that, like, makes it so different? Like, why do we keep going? Why do we go to the same places literally every single day? And we take people now with us. And we just kind of show them essentially what we do when we're there. And everyone's like, that was so much fucking fun. And then like, it just kind of keeps growing now where when we go, people are like, well, I want to go next. And it's like, yeah, man, like now we got to get like these giant ass houses to like house all the people that want to come with us to this thing. But there's something to be said about kind of showcasing something that's so that kind of recharges you, that refills you, gives you that thing that nowhere else that you've kind of gone can like tap into and to me, I feel like that's sort of, without getting like too pretentious, I feel like at times that's sort of the beauty of like 
making a record again with people or like bringing new people into the fold is you kind of get to showcase like this is why i love this thing this this thing that like makes me feel like nothing else does this is it and like for me it's a place for you maybe it's it's getting in a room and jamming with all these guys and just creating and adding on to you know your legacy and these kind of things and, and what it does for people once it's out into the world um right. like i said i know that's a really weird analogy but it's something where I go and I, I keep telling myself I don't need to go do these things like famously the Atlanta Aquarium. I'm like, I don't need to go ever again. I've been so many times. I don't need to go. And then I get into that fucking room with the whale shark and just sit there for like 30 minutes and just get lost. And I'm like, this is worth it every single time. And I trick myself into thinking that I don't need this or I don't care. And then I do it and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I did this again, even though I didn't think it really would have that much of an impact on me at this point. We then pop over to the world of Coke. I did, but we the only time we've done it was during quarantine. And I got to say, I feel like we got the shit under the stick because where they give you all like the fountains in that area, they only they chose the two from each station and just handed it to you. And you're like, well, I don't want that one. <laughs> so yeah, we keep talking about how we got to go and actually do that. Yeah, right. I guess, yeah, I guess during quarantine, yeah. I guess that sort of thing would probably be yeah, shut down for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't done the Ferris wheel either downtown. That's like another weird bucket list thing I want to do. Yeah, cool. I think I got a I got a picture on my fridge right now of that actually. Me and my wife on there maybe. But yeah. On the Ferris wheel? <laughs> yeah. It's like the few times I've gone the last like three or four times, it's like the shake machine at McDonald's. It's always down <laughs> for maintenance. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> come on. You should just put a sign yeah. on the on the thing to let me know before I even get here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because there's, like, not really a whole lot, especially during the day, uh, to go down there and go do. But usually if uh, we're heading down that way, it's either to uh, hit up a few a few bars that way or we're heading probably to Magic City not too long after being downtown, downtown. Right, right. That's a nice culture shock for people who have never been. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, it's always, yeah, it's always crazy. Uh, we Before we moved... Back, my wife's from Michigan, but before we moved back to Michigan, we were living in, well, we went from Chicago to, we were in Nashville for five years. And I told her, I was mm. like, look, you've never lived in the South. It's going to be, it's probably going to be somewhat of a shock for you. I was like, there's a lot of bugs. It's really hot. It's like, it's a, um, it's a slower pace of life. <laughs> it is. Uh, but, but yeah, you know. But yeah, it was cool. We we uh we had a good time down there. And then uh, you know, once what all, it, all Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say how like I say for me something that always has drawn me to to Atlanta, at least like in the little pocket I stay in in like East Atlanta, little five points. Um it feels progressive in a way I just can't explain. Like you have to be a part of it, like be there and feel it and see it. Um and that's not to say that other places don't have that same kind of vibe. It's just not that I've experienced like that. Um, but I always think it's interesting because like I grew up out East, like I said, and then moved here in the Midwest uh, in like the mid nineties. And I can think of the things growing up that were a culture shock to me, like being right. so young. Was there much of a culture shock for you kind of moving here when you've kind of been predominantly living, I guess you lived in Chicago. Um, so you kind of pulled the Dansby Swans in there, but um how has it been for you to live in the Midwest compared to out or out in the South? Um, probably my biggest adjustment period for that was when I moved to Chicago, and and I mean like you know when you I lived in the city too, so it was like not only mm. are you adjusting to living in this big city, but but you know it's uh, you know Chicago is obviously just very different from really even a big city in the South, like Chicago and Atlanta are very different places. But, uh, I mean, Detroit to me is like, kind of like my almost like third home. I've just been here so much over the years. So it's like, I pretty much, I've known the lay of the land pretty well. So, and I'm pretty acclimated to the Midwest, but I think like the biggest, I don't know. I think like the biggest thing I noticed between there's, there's a few differences, but the biggest thing I know I noticed between the Midwest and the South is that, Midwesterners seem to be the culture up here seems to be based off more like uh, like Germanic 
heritage, a lot of that. And um, where like the South is like, a, like almost everybody from where I'm from is like, they're all, like from like uh, the UK or Scotland. There's a lot, a lot more than that. But besides that, the Midwesterners are a little bit more direct and dry, maybe a little more standoffish, I find. We're in the South, we're a little bit more, I feel like the Southern people can be like real spunky, but and yeah. we can talk your head off if we want to, but we're not very direct. Like we'll do the bless no. your heart thing and all this, but then we'll be talking shit behind your back. <laughs> so, but we are warm. Southerners are definitely, the Southern charm thing, I mean, depending on where you go, it is very real, you know? Um, yeah. As far as Atlanta goes, man, Atlanta has just, you know, I heard it, it just passed like a DC population. It's got like 6.3 million people now. Like North Georgia has just like, man, from when I was a kid, like it's just exploded. Like I used to dread having to drive. My, I'm from near like middle Georgia and I would okay. to go to my parents' house. I would have to go from Nashville through Atlanta. And I mean, it would just take like so long because i feel like the traffic in north georgia now is just so bad like you start feeling atlanta traffic like almost one hour you know below the tennessee border but anyway but yeah atlanta's huge it's just grown so much too over the past you know decade really and it's been growing even in the 90s but um yeah but yeah that's i don't know i mean i think i think the midwest and the south are uh, it's it's so weird to me they're they're like really not that close i feel like once you get to like cincinnati you're almost back in like the south you know yeah it's like you're getting you're, you're pretty, so we're like really not that far as far as like where our lines begin but like man it's it's yeah it definitely is weird like culturally how how different how different they can be and just like some some ways subtly i guess but you know well i think well, like I that's think, been the uh, uh, the one thing i the last thing i'll say about it though um I like being back up here. A lot of uh, great, you know, more Italian restaurants up this way. And the <laughs> South, I kind of didn't think about it. My wife has some Italian heritage, and she's like, man, there's just like no, she's like, not, not a lot of Italian restaurants down south. I was like, you're, I was like, I really never thought about that. But like, compared to like, <laughs> especially Chicago, you know, even Detroit, yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, you're, you're right. There's not, you know, yeah. you don't get a lot of, um, um, we have, you know, like some of my relatives too, like they're, they're originally from like Czech, you know, of course, ca uh, Chicago, huge Polish population. I feel like, yeah, I don't see a lot of that in the South, maybe here and there. Actually, I hear Texas has a pretty big Czech population, yeah. but, um, but yeah, you don't see, you know, I feel like you see less of that in the South, which I, which I like that about the North, just more like a bit more diversity, maybe up here, depending on what diversity we're talking about. But anyway, I'm yeah. rambling point. <laughs> No, it's all good. The whole point of a podcast is to kind of ramble and, and go into weird <laughs> tangents. That's why I stopped like prepping for them in the sense of like coming up with a shitload of questions because I'm like, there's more fun. And to me, like when you do this, like the whole point is really to kind of, I hope to make someone that's into you and or the band learn more about you. Like someone like you can go probably go to a million other shows or like, you know, websites or whatever and learn more about like, okay, here's the technical way you're playing. You're playing through, you know, a PRS using, you know, these Dunlop strings or something. And yeah, right. I'm still using, you know, whatever the things you've been doing and doing, like someone can get that information anywhere else, but like is someone, and maybe someone doesn't necessarily care about like how you grew up or like the different moving that you've done with your significant other and like what it's, how it's impacted you or like what you've noticed. But to me, I think those are parts that, especially being married and traveling with my, my significant other for the last you know 10 years or so that it's changed who I am. Like it's allowed me to see different parts of the world I live in and to experience different cultures and, you know, trying new things. And to me, I can't help but think that like, obviously it's, it's changed who I am. So like you being a touring musician living in different cities and so forth, like that's obviously has to has changed you over the years. And what does that look like? Cause to me, like, like I said er kind of in the beginning the experience of navigating life especially getting older like you know going to be 40 in about a month that it's like these are the things that i think about now because it's like okay i've lived a, 
a pretty decent amount of life at this point. So it's like, you know, and I'm reminded at times working with, you know, like a job I had previously working with kids uh, as, you know, the manager of a hat store in, in the mall. And it became this thing. Like, I remember one, one of my employees was like, I want to follow you around and kind of get how to talk to people like you. And there she was watching me one day talk to this guy that was probably the same age as me, maybe a little older or younger. And then she was like, oh, I just don't know how you do that. And I was like, you're not going to get the like 10 hours I'd spend on a Saturday watching, you know, t like Chicago sports and watching the Bulls in the 90s or watching the Braves in like the early 90s when they had Deion Sanders. Like you're not going to have that same frame of reference as I do. So like watching yeah. me talk to someone you're not going to get that. That's not something you're going to be able to just pick up. Like you need to have your own thing based on your own experiences. And I think that that job and that situation as a whole kind of really opened me up more to wanting to kind of talk more about people's experiences on this show, because I think we all live a different life and, and there's a lot of similarities, but also these similarities or these things we all go through affect us completely differently. Right, right, right. It's funny that that thing you're just talking about, you know, where you're like, you know, you're talking to someone relatively, you're, you know, your same age and, but someone else that's maybe younger, they're not going to learn it yet. Cause you have a completely different, you know, perspective of how you grew up. I find like, there's a lot of things like that as I've gotten, yeah, I'm like 41 now. And I've got, as I've gotten older, I start realizing those things more like, yeah, I remember like back when I was, you know, 19 or 20 and you're like, uh, you know, I was listening to, you know, listening to whatever bands, you know, like all these Swedish bands. Like, man, I bet it'd be great. I bet it'd be great to like be a band like one of these, get like one of these bands and this and that. And you like build up this whole thing in your mind. But then like, as you get older, you realize like, yeah, but you can never, it doesn't matter who it is. You, it's not going to work out the same way because this band was doing this and this time frame and the world was this way. <laughs> it's, it's just not possible. Like things were, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, like whatever they're doing then that was big then isn't the same as now because people are for one, the same people, those people are older now too. Like there's a different generation that doesn't this, you know, this see, sort of scene that's happening now, is not here now? You know, like th right. same sort of reference thing. Um, and then, and then, yeah, the thing about traveling, yeah, I think like travel is like, I mean, this is another thing I've come to, you know, you realize it more, I feel like you get older, but yeah, I feel like it's, it's like the best way to just get different perspectives of, yeah, the world and how other people live and different cultures and yeah, so forth and so on for sure. Well, it's like, I was talking with a, a friend's wife the other day and my buddy and him or her moved back to Germany. Like that's where she grew up and is from. And another podcast and I were kind of making a reference to uh, their husband. And I was like, he grew up in the South and he's just so pale. <laughs> like it just, it's an anomaly. Like, I don't know how he grew up in, in the South and just, you know, is like white as a ghost. Like that just is so weird. And then it was kind of funny. Like I had the epiphany of like, oh my God, I haven't even thought of like, what was it like for her to go and live in Alabama? Like of all places, like along the coastline, that must've been a really interesting thing for her to go through and i just never really thought about it and so i kind of had messaged her like kind of it was like oh, i was thinking about you the other day and it's funny because like we just don't think of these other experiences that we go through or think like because the thing i made a comment to her is you got to grow up in your in your spouse's literally childhood home with his family and i go you got to experience a side of your significant other that like most of us will never really get to fully understand because yes, we can go back to the in-laws and go to the houses and stuff like that, but to like fully live in that, like that's such an interesting way to learn so much about this other side of your family that you probably, most of us never will. And to have it potentially be really jarring to be like, and you're from Germany. So now enjoy being in like mobile Alabama. <laughs> yeah, that's man. That would be, yeah. Uh... Yeah, there's yeah, going to going from Germany to Mobile, that would be that's a pretty big change right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While I got you for a couple more minutes, um, a question I kind of like to ask in this day and age. Um, obviously this record, you know, you guys have been working on it for however long it's it's been done. Uh, because I don't think a lot of people realize like the vinyl lead time. So it's like you could have been sitting on this record maybe a year in some instances, waiting for that vinyl to to ship and be ready for you know certain tour announcements and all that. 
But in about a month, this is no longer just yours. It, it belongs to everybody at that point. So what are you most excited for everyone to hear uh, with the final, like getting to hear the full album? And what is what does this one mean to you? You know, like this m many records into your career, what does this one mean to you? I mean, as far as what it what it means to me, I would say it's just like a new a new beginning, you know, a new era. Um, I guess you could say anytime you add a new member, it's a new era. But like, you know, with this one, uh, given everything that's happened, I mean, this one I feel like is definitely, you know, it, it is kind of like a somewhat of a new beginning. I mean, it's it's the same band, but 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 it's a new it's almost kind of kind of a new band you know uh i mean i think we still i mean overall though i think it's very much it's we very much still sound like um the black dahlia murder like every, everything that people ex pretty much expect to hear is uh is still gonna be there um and i really i'm i'm very excited for people to hear it i'm, I'm just i hope it just uh maybe like uh helps ease anyone's fear of, of what it's gonna sound like. I hope <laughs> one thing they're like, ah, okay. I'm, I'm not so stressed about this anymore. If anybody has any of those <laughs> but uh but yeah I mean like yeah that's that's it though in general you know I mean it's I just oh I, I think every once everyone hears it they're gonna be like okay this is still a black volume murder record there are some different things going on here but overall Still the same band, still putting out like high quality metal music, you know, to thrash about too and what. And then last question for you, where can everyone find you or anything you would like to plug? Um I mean follow Black Dahlia on Instagram. We're pretty easy to find. Uh most of everything we're doing is up on there. Um, Robbie, our social media manager, he's always posting all the happenings. I mean, I'm sure you can check us out on Facebook too, but I feel like sometimes it's just a little bit more immediate on Instagram. Um, right. If anyone cares about what the individual band members are doing, I think all of us are like tagged on there, you know, where it, people are usually tagged. And, but, but yeah, Facebook, Instagram, um, Night Shift merch, if you want to pick up, if you want to pick up the record, that's one of the places you can go do it maybe even metal blade i'm sure you can get it from them too so and thanks of course for anybody that picks out the record and even if you don't pick it up thanks for just checking it out listen to the singles checking it out on youtube wherever you want to stream it from or whatever well thank you for taking the time to uh chat looking forward to uh you guys hopefully making your way back down this way soonish i feel like you're due for another pyramid scheme show uh in the next couple of months for the yeah. year ends i feel like and then sure we'll uh that. hopefully sometime and then hopefully we have a braves a braves win tonight i'm hoping right yeah <laughs> it's <fruit to> <laughs> absolutely enjoy the rest of your day and hopefully we'll do another one of these uh in the near future and maybe uh rip a beer or two yes for sure nice talking to you right. thanks for having you me. as well yeah absolutely so that was my conversation with Ryan. I want to thank him once again for taking the time uh, chatting with me, uh, kind of chopping up a little bit about some uh, some Atlanta things. Uh, the Braves obviously did not do well. Uh, as of when I'm recording this, we know that it is the Dodgers against the Yankees in the World Series. So that is wild. Uh, probably going to do big ratings, but obviously the Braves did not do how well we thought they were going to. So such things happen. There's always next year, as we like to say in sports. But um, kind of thinking about this a little bit more and, you know, obviously with the, the heaviness of, you know, the intro to this and some of the topics uh, that were discussed in the chat with Ryan, you know, I, I just I realized in doing this episode and doing prepping to do this intro outro several times because I just never felt like things were the way I wanted them to be. I kind of came to the realization that this band just means so much to so many people and that at the end of the day I just like I understand and I see firsthand living here where I do what this band meant to everybody what Trevor meant to everybody and to still see the band continuing on and putting out a fucking great record uh, again if you haven't checked out Servitude it is out now via Metal Blade Records go pick it up go stream it uh, go to the band's web store all that kind of stuff pick up the record uh, support the band honestly um, 
Uh, if you're listening, then I think you know what the Black Dahlia means to all of us. So uh, please support those dudes. And beyond that, though, I, I think as I'm sitting here right now, I feel like it's just the magnitude of the band. And I remember there was a few times where I had been trying to get Trevor on the show and it just kind of didn't happen for a multitude of reasons. Uh, a lot of times it was because I was trying to do something when they were playing here in town. And it's hard for a band that lives in Michigan to to try to do something the day of a show because they're spending a lot of time with friends and family uh, that are making the trip to come see them. It's honestly why it has been impossible to, to set up something with the I Prevail camp, with the We Came As Romans camp, because I live here, and so me trying to do something you know here uh, with the guys is infinitely frustrating to align the time to do it. Uh, and you don't want to take away that time for, for those people because that, that little bit of time when friends and family, especially in a home state show, that's probably going to be the thing that like takes you through the next couple of dates until you get to come back home until you get to see these people. And, you know, I just don't want to be the cause of, of, Oh, I got to do this, this interview thing because I'm being selfish if I'm being honest. And I think even in that, I kind of have stumbled across the thought maybe that there's a little bit of selfishness in my line of questioning to Ryan. You know, it's not my place necessarily to to ask a stranger, like, does it does making this album feel like the pressure and the weight that it would seem like we're all putting on you? Like, are you aware of it? Like, and I'm sure everyone is because you're making art for commodity, essentially, but it's not necessarily my place to kind of pick at somebody and kind of see how are you doing mentally? How did you process your grief and so forth? Like it's not, it's not my place to know that, but at the same time, I, I feel like, I feel like almost like a, a sense of responsibility to a degree to kind of ask that. And it's one of the few bands, like I said, that I, I feel that way with when the, when the opportunity to have someone from the band finally, presented itself, I just found myself going, well, I know what it looks like when I go through some of these things. And I know when I've kind of come to the, what seems like a potential end of something, uh, and I'm not in, involved in it. What does that look like? How do you deal with it? And you know, I, you hear me always kind of constantly saying on this, like, I'm interested in the human experience. Like we're all here together. We experience a lot of the same things. How do you traverse it? What do you think? Because maybe it'll unlock something for me where I can go, oh, I remember, you know, Ryan made a comment about something. And, and maybe instead of being in this moment and feeling the way I typically would, maybe I need to step back for a minute and kind of approach it with a differing perspective. And I think at the end of the day, that's all I'm really looking for. And I hope that that comes across. I hope that the sincerity of my questions doesn't border on intrusive and like I said, egregious, just kind of like, ugh. but more of that's a good question. I would want to know how to go through that because I don't think I could. I don't think I'd have the strength to go through that. And so for that, I'm really thankful that Ryan came on the show and answered my questions. Um, all of that said, let's let's start wrapping up this episode. Uh, if you would like to keep up with Black Dolly Murder, you can find them. Well, honestly, just go to their website, tbdmofficial.com. But if you'd like me to spell out everything for you, uh, you can go to Facebook, Black the Black Dolly Murder Official. Uh, Instagram is at the Black Dolly Murder underscore official, and Twitter is at TBDM Official. Uh, if you like to keep up with Ryan, you can find him on Instagram at Ryan Knight Guitar. Uh, he also has a link tree that's also in his bio uh, on Instagram, uh, but it's like linktree.com slash Ryan Knight GTR. Uh, all this is in the show notes wherever you're listening to this. So if you are interested in doing all that, uh, keep up with Ryan. He does, uh, looks like on occasion, does offer like guitar lessons and stuff like that. So if that is something you would be interested in, uh, go check that out. If you'd like to keep up with the podcast, you can find us simple enough at Brew Speak Pod on all your major social media platforms. Uh, you can email me at brutallyspeaking at gmail.com if you have any guest suggestions or any comments about something that was discussed in the show. Uh, it was funny. I had someone reach out uh, from the episode with Craig last week that was like, much music. I haven't thought of that in forever. So kind of a nice blast from the past of thinking about how we used to uh, probably sit in our parents' houses and watch music videos on 
Well, I guess not MTV because toward the end they just stopped showing uh, music videos, which is why I really enjoyed having much music. But it is kind of interesting to, to kind of have that epiphany I did uh, during the intro of that and being like, I don't know if that existed in other areas or just existed here because I live next to the Canadian border, like a few hours away. Um, so I would love to hear more if uh, if you do remember that uh, and you weren't along a bordering Canadian. Uh, entryway let me know like how i would be interested to see what the reach of much music was <laughs> all these years later since it doesn't matter but um yeah email me brutally speaking at gmail.com and lastly want to thank rockabilia head on over to rockabilia.com use our code brutally at checkout take 10 percent off your total purchase order uh, i want to thank them for supporting the show for so many years now and just honestly i i know i say it like every ending of every episode but if you're not following them, at least on Instagram and just seeing all the shit that they just keep doing, like it's insane. Like they are, are like one of the newer bands announced for the Halloween stuff is Metallica. And to see all the people like they post in their stories the like big name people commenting on the design, uh, you know, they're working with big graphic design artists and stuff like that. So it's a, they're just doing cool stuff. So if you're not already aware who they are and you're not buying stuff from them and you don't know what they have, then go there, go check it out, see what they're doing, see why people are excited about these exclusive drops that they're doing for different holidays and the bands are collaborating with. I I'm sure you will find something that you're like, wow, I didn't know I needed that in my life, but now I do. And I will stop at nothing to get it and use my code brutally at checkout and take 10% off and do such and reward yourself. Cause you deserve it. You do. Maybe go pick up some Black Dahlia merch. I'm sure they got something over there. Go pick it up. And for the Brutally Speaking Podcast, I am John, and I will see you all next time where I have uh, Robert and Justin of Revis. That was a really, really fun one for me. I will get into it next week, but I'm excited to bring you that episode. And uh, until then, enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you really take some time out for yourself and for your loved ones, and I will talk to you all next time.